Hey everyone, it's uh, Scott Norris here. Today I'm going to have a look at DevOps tooling and CoStream, essentially in VRA. Now, I've dealt with uh, quite a number of customers as of late where they're, you know, they're wanting to do this as more large enterprises. Um, they're not traditionally, you know, cloud native, uh, using a lot of DevOps tool sets, uh, but they're sort of getting there and they want to use you know, the existing tooling that they've got, plus others, and wanting to run through a release pipeline. Now, VRA in itself, you know, it's got some elements of, uh, uh, if you want to call it infrastructure as code, but I like term blueprint as code, because a blueprint contains, you know, a lot more, uh, including applications. Now, a really good way and a really good tool to use for this is CodeStream. Now, I've a number of people that I know that use this, and other large organizations, but they also use their other release pipelines. Um, you know, whether it's Jenkins, whether it's Bamboo, whether it's something else um, that has a release pipeline built in it, TFS uh, Release Manager, for example. And, you know, they all really do the same job. The benefit CodeStream has is obviously its native integration with um, VRA, for one, VRO, uh, as well as, you know, out of the box integrations with your Alassian suite, your, your Jenkins artifactories, etc. So what I want to show today is a blueprint, a blueprint I've done many times before, and just give you an example of how this can be used. So if you have a look here at our uh, blueprint, I'll go to, uh, let's choose one, which will be this one as an example. We can see that, you know, traditional blueprint, it's a, I love this multi-tier application because uh, I, I know it works and, it, and it's always good to demo. Now, as you can see, we've got RabbitMQ, we've got, you know, Tomcat, Tomcat server, we've got, you know, a bunch of um, uh, SQL Fire, a bunch of networks, load balancers, etc. So if we have a look here, essentially the way we'd want to do it is to build up our application. Now this can work with COTS products. Uh, it can work with, you know, your web-based products where you're just dropping, you know, war files in, and that's essentially what this is doing. And as part of our inputs of our blueprint, we want to have a, a URL to our artifact so we can download it uh, and, and consume it. So, you know, we're, we're sort of mixing our infrastructure, our application, but we're feeding in our code at the same time. Now, you know, depending on your maturity, it can be you know, more advanced, more more flexible, more dynamic, uh, or it can be fairly static and you're just throwing, you know, web files at it that have been built. You know, it doesn't really matter. But the great thing is, is that, you know, VRA is capable of taking these as inputs and really it's as smart as you make it at the end of the day. So we have a look at this. This is our blueprint. Uh, these files here, uh, properties here, take in war files. Now I'm gonna overwrite these war files uh, as part of my uh, pipeline and my build. So if I cancel this and let's have a look at the uh, the pipeline. So I go to CodeStream uh, and this is the pipeline I'm going to do. So traditionally this is the one that I'll do. Uh, if we view the pipeline here, uh, stages, we can see I've got a build that goes out to Jenkins to do a build. Now it's going to be building um, some Java and then it resolves the artifacts in, from Artifactory. So Jenkins will place the build artifacts in Artifactory and then using the native integration, we can then resolve those artifacts uh, with, with really doing not much at all, just uh, pointing it at uh, Artifactory with the right search parameters. And then we have a look at, then what we do is I build a um, dev VRA7. I then get the, the network, the load balancer IP address and URL. I then call Jenkins to do a test homepage, now I destroy the deployment. So that's just what I want to do. Now I deploy into test, which might be a different VRA, different environment, different domain, wherever it may be. I then get again, get the network, I then do additional tests. So these can be user acceptance testing as an example, and then I go into performance tests. But I don't have time to uh, for, wait for it to go through and delete and build and all the rest of it. So I've made a smaller one here. Uh, and we can see from the stages that it's just going to do the build, resolve, and just go through once. So if we have a look, if I just edit this, uh, for those who haven't seen CodeStream, 
No very typical, you can see the task. I can pick the provider uh, that we want to use. Uh, and then we can go into these. We can see that we can configure it. I'm here, I'm telling it um, these are what I want to look for. Uh, I'm feeding in the build number that I get from Jenkins, etc. So it's dynamically finding these. And then as part of that, when I do my deploy, I'm actually going to go to the advanced view here. So it gives me a better view. If I go advanced, we'll be able to see that as part of my URL, uh, when I find it, there we go, is that I'm putting in my resolved artifacts. So we'll kick that off uh, and we'll see it go through. Um, now let's execute that. Done. Now that's executing. So as we can see, I usually do this build fairly often uh, just to test my lab more than anything else, make sure everything's uh, up and running. Now we can see Jenkins building, so I've got Jenkins here, we can see Traders building there. I can have a quick look in, in here uh, at the build, have a look at the output, and we can see it's grabbing it from Git. Now what I didn't do was this, so this is the, the Spring Trader um, app that it's running. Build all that. Let's uh, put this back. Whoop. And we let it go. And hopefully it all works. So it is executing all the Gradle tasks. I'll go back to Jenkins here. I'll enable auto refresh. So there's our successful build. Now that's placed all those war files in Artifactory. And we can see that it's now resolved the artifact, which is awesome. Let's go back to here. So we can actually come in here and we can look at that and we can see that it's found the uh, artifacts and the right build number of 53. And now it's deploying in VRA. So if we actually go to VRA and we'll go to requests, now it's doing it as a service account. We can see there you go, it's been kicked off and now that's currently in progress.
that's going to go through and do all the building. Okay, that's finished. Now, close that one. We should see that go to finished very soon too. Let's uh, it'll take a little bit after it's uh, completed. Alright, you see it's uh, finished that, it's just parsing the network, shouldn't take very long at all. We can see there it's actually already doing the account test and login. So if we look at my one of my Selenium nodes, so I've made it only one node so I can see it come up. Now I do like uh, this type of um, testing, headless testing is okay, but you know it's pretty cool when you can actually show it. So here it is. Loading up. That's cool, it tells you that it's uh, being uh, remotely controlled. Fingers crossed it all works. See everything being entered in there, password, log out. Now that should finish. Yep, great. Now it should do the uh, trade test if everything's uh, going through the motions. There it is, doing the trade test. Uh, up to that. So again we should see it all come up and it happens pretty quick but makes a trade, does some buying of shares and tests those functionality. Logs in, makes a trade, done. You know nice and quick, simple and these tests, Selenium tests, you know you can do hundreds for every feature, new feature, uh, regression testing, all the rest of it, but they, these are just an example uh, that should, when that refreshes, hopefully that should come back all good. Yep, and it should actually be doing a performance test as well. So the performance test is testing a thousand concurrent users uh, within my lab here using uh, JMeter. Not done. So hopefully, all good. So that's completed. So that's just a very simple pipeline uh, showing how a VRA blueprint uh, can be used in conjunction with your release pipeline and your code drops. Now, obviously, you know, depending on the size of your app, uh, you might not always want to provision new. And, you know, CodeStream still has the ability to run scripts and code on particular boxes that you feed it to. So you can have pre... You know, you can have um, pre-provisioned environments and, you know, I have some customers that have, you know, they'll have a morning build that will build up. Uh, for dev, they'll just drop all their code on it during the day and at night time it tear down and rebuilds new. So every day they start fresh with a consistent uh, state of the infrastructure, uh, allowing them to then, you know, roll these builds through dev all the way through prod. Uh, with the infrastructure intact so we know that no one's made any changes uh, which is you know which is really key right you want everything to be the same in dev as it was for prod anyway that's um uh, realized code stream a uh, bit of uh, uh, integration with jenkins artifactory selenium uh, vro vra uh, as well as i'm using jmeter there for performance uh, which i can't really show like i can with the uh, testing but we can always go into um, the performance that just ran here and you can see the performance graphs uh, last build um, performance report and it gives us the the uh, the performance there which isn't great but it's you know it is a it is a test load so 
Anyway, uh, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed. Have fun. Cheers, bye.